I saw this post on Facebook and it really caused me to be triggered because when I was a child in elementary school, I was about 45 pounds soaking wet and was like seven years old. <laughs> I was very, very small. But one thing that happened to me often was bullying. And I find it so ironic that Facebook collided me face to face with my bullying. And she was very supportive of, you know, the things that I was doing in the public and the messages that I was giving out. And something that was so interesting to me, you know, reading this post, it's so many kids who will never ever, you know, admit to their parents that they're being bullied. And it's just so unfortunate, you know? And I always say like, you should make the effort to have your child feel comfortable in being themselves and un unapologetically because you know I would go to school with a little mermaid lunchbox and I would get clowned on for having a lunchbox I always had the wrong shoes I always had the wrong clothes you know I was pretty stylish and then I wasn't and the things that I wanted to wear was terrible you know because kids always had the the latest name brands and my family just couldn't afford that and in reality, my mom was in nursing school and my parents had just split up. I had just lost my grandmother. I don't give a fuck about what any of you kids are saying right now. In real reality, I was completely mute. And maybe they used that as a crutch, you know, to continue to bully me. But I was always in fist fights. I almost didn't graduate the third grade because I was always, you know, in trouble. And it wasn't even my fault. Again, I was mute. Um, I was going to get left back in second grade, but it wasn't necessarily because of my mind. That second grade teacher, Mrs. Butler, brought out the best of me. She taught us how to meditate. She introduced us to Kenny G. She introduced us to a butterfly and understanding the metamorphosis of life, let alone an insect you know, who has later became one of my favorites, you know, as an adult, because our lives look similar. So, you know, realizing that bullying is a major issue in our community, because children who appear to have less than or appear to have some type of mental illness or disability stopping them from being normal, that they are now picked on. So, you know, just continue to love on your children and pour into them so, so much. I'm about to cry because I had never had my parents, you know, take the initiative of that because they were working so much. You know, I was a latchkey kid. I took care of myself a great portion of my life. I was home alone a lot. And I think that's why I'm so well advanced as an adult because I had to do a lot on my own you know a full-fledged adult at eight, eight, eight years old nine years old you know knowing how to cook clean do laundry iron my clothes brush my teeth prepare a bath getting the bed you know like this was really my life and I don't think people realize that what's happening within the black community or Hispanic community at all you know, these were things that our oppressors did to us and they didn't care because they're on their yachts and their planes and, you know, running the world and at our expense. And that's why I'm so passionate about pouring into people because I know how I felt. I've done so many inner child healing, therapies, counselings, worksheets, just so many different things and the one person that made me really wake up and have a true aha moment was princess nappy i did a private session with her and the way she broke down her session and really forced me to look at my childhood it really shifted me because i hadn't realized how much i had lying dormant inside of me or how much anger I had inside of me even against my parents for not realizing that their parents also didn't give them a silver spoon or the right tools to keep us all on the up and up and to be financially savvy 
you know and it's not to say that they didn't have them you know my parent or my parents family comes from well but unfortunately some of it was stolen um, a great portion of it was stolen and I think many of us could agree that that is indeed our story and I think it's up to us to fight for that back and it's, it's lovely how all the noise starts when I start saying these things you know but back to bullying and back to healing and back to recognizing that even as adults, we are bullied. And I've just witnessed some harsh behavior, you know, even just growing up in New York City, inner city on the cheese rock, going to and from school, you know, and I quickly said, I don't even wanna fucking be on the bus with these kids. I'd rather take public transit. So you don't wanna take the free bus, you'd rather pay for a bus pass. Well, can't y'all do something to get me a free bus pass? And I was able to do half fare and i was so happy because it was no longer bullying no longer toxic name calling no more shaming you know no more just no more and that sometimes may have to be the solution you may have to find a way so that your child is no longer experiencing these things because if you're not personally bringing them to school every day they may be with those people who are bullies. You know, my nephew was a victim of gun violence during a time that my mom was also sick. And I didn't even know what to do. I didn't even know how to cope. Like I was really losing my shit. And the only thing that made me happy was being on an airplane. It was leading me away from my problems. And we should never run, but we should find ways to cope. And you know, with bullying, it leads to unfortunate suicide. It leads to serial killers. It leads to people hating other people. It leads to mass shootings in the United States. And I think that the United States has been a place in a land of slave labor and greed for far too long. Because if it weren't, we really wouldn't have as many mass shootings as we do. And I think that there's so much peace and I feel so much peace in other places around the world because I know that I can go out and yes, somebody may look at me because they know that I don't belong here. But I also know that I have a glow that automatically comes with me because of all the turmoil and trauma that I came from. You know, and it's like, I wish we had the option to stay in Puerto Rico and Barbados and in Europe because, and in Africa, most importantly, shout out to my Nigerian, West African people. My blood flows with their blood. And I just can't even imagine Ethiopia. I, those borders should have been closed for life. The Ark of the Covenant allegedly is in Ethiopia. And then someone in my DMs two days later confirms it because they live there and they want me to visit. It's just, wow. I'm so thankful and blessed that I never became a statistic. Oh, I'm about to weep. As I may have been a statistic for being bullied, for having to witness gunshots and running from gunshots with my grandmother at a July 4th barbecue in Pennsylvania, Philadelphia running from gunshots on multiple occasions, having guns in the home, you know, realizing that drugs, alcohol, and weapons were normal my everyday life. Knowing that I grew up in the inner city, 476 Richmond Terrace, apartment 8B, Staten Island, New York. Knowing that I also came from, I don't even remember my address, 820 Henderson Avenue, 1C. We lived all over West Brighton, you know, and then you get a little money and then you move your kids out of the hood. I never understood why people don't want to leave their cities or why they don't want to move out of their states where they were born and raised, why they are so committed 
to where they were born and raised. I never understood that. I don't think there's anything wrong with giving back, but sometimes you just have to cross the bridge. I think the greatest thing that my parents could do for us was move us out of New York City. It was the best thing they could have ever done for us. It allowed me to get this tough, thick skin that I do have, but it also taught me how to grow and become what I call to be free as fuck. It allowed me to seek higher education and obtain higher education in public school, in public school, just by crossing the bridge. I feel that so many of us are afraid to step out of what our parents deemed was best for us. Whereas what you're paying in a city, no matter what city you live in, Hong Kong, Los Angeles, Dallas, Atlanta, Miami, you know, these highly populated cities, Chicago, Detroit, you know, with gentrification now in Detroit, you know, if you can get things for so much less and have a better quality of life with more sunlight that is meant to make you grow as an individual, this is a big ass B in my face. Um, why wouldn't you want that? For your soul I'm not for everybody but the people that I am for they know what's up I'm sitting out here in the rain right now talking to y'all finished trading I've been exhausted today's the day after the Lionsgate port and I haven't seen the sun in three days and that's really what made me come out here to record I need to be in the South. I need to be in a place that has at least 300 days of sunlight. I've had more cloudy and rainy days here than any other time, and I live in Maryland. While I love what the area offers, I cannot forfeit sunlight. My face would never look like this if I had sunlight. Never. You guys rarely saw my face with blemish when I lived in Alabama because of sunlight. So, you know, my immediate plan is seek a place that has 300 days of sunlight. I loved living in Reno and while I didn't live there a complete year, I lived there for 10 months. And I promise you, I saw the sun every single day. When I lived in Cali, I chose to live in Cali because the sun came out every single day. You can't really say that in 2024, but in 2019 you could when I moved there. And it just does something for your psyche. It does something to your soul. It does something to your spirit. So where we are headed as a collective and as the mama earth, mother earth, the she's trying to raise her vibration high enough to ascend because you better believe if we are ascending the only reason why we are ascending is because we are tapped into nature and tapped into the elements and tapped into mother earth enough to know that we too had to ascend the only way that you're going to continue to ascend to higher di dimensions and realms 5d 7d 11 13 the only way you're going to be able to ascend to those realms is if you continue to cleave to nature. Forget Adam for both sexes. Cleave to nature. That is the only way you're going to survive. We have to cut off alcohol. We have to cut off weed as much as I hate to admit it. Um, if you're going to do it, you have to grow it on your own. I really feel like there's too many chemicals or not enough chemicals and what these people are doing they're they're charging you hundreds of dollars in marijuana and it's not even real at this point so we got to really be careful with where we're headed you know as a people and as a collective and I don't think many people will be able to survive 
much longer without sunlight because you know i always keep thinking like damn i should go back to jersey i should go back to new york and then the more i think about it i'm like there's no way that i could live there during nine months out of the year where it's gloomy it's gloomy i i don't i can't do it i'd really have to genuinely be somewhere where i can get kissed by the sun god raw every day so peace empower black power